I love this thing. The Montage is an incredible game-changing synthesizer. Another incredible game-changing, genre-changing, one of the most famous synthesizers of all time was the DX7. I'm gonna tell you how you can get the DX7 inside your Montage or Modi X, and I'm gonna give you a couple hundred patches for free, coming up. The Yamaha DX7, when it came out in 1982, revolutionized synthesizers. It used a new type of synthesis called FM synthesis that was new to the synth synthesizer world, but it was not new itself. It was developed in the 1960s at Stanford University in California. It was shopped around to all the different synth manufacturers, but nobody was interested until Yamaha came along in 1975, purchased exclusive licensing rights to FM synthesis. And every Yamaha synth since then that includes FM synthesis pays a license to Stanford University. They've made millions of it. Yamaha worked really hard to develop a synthesizer that they could base on this new FM synthesis. Their first effort was called the GS1. It was released in 1981. It was not a success, mainly because the digital technology required to, to create it wasn't quite available yet. As a result, the number of integrated circuits that had to be crammed into the GS1 made it so expensive that nobody could afford to buy it. Yamaha fixed that for the next release by developing VLSI chips, which are very large scale integration where they could take a whole bunch of discrete integrated circuits and cram them into one huge integrated circuit. They did exactly that with the Yamaha DX7 and they used only two VLSI chips to replace the 50 chips that were in the GS1. They wanted that synthesizer that they had designed to be different than anything else that had come before it. Completely digital, no knobs, nothing analog. It had a membrane panel, a single slider for data entry, and a readout that would be used to read the values of the various parameters that were being set. They put a very nice aftertouch enabled key bed on it and a steel case. It looked futuristic. Now they needed some sounds for it, but they were up against a deadline. Yamaha brought in Dave Bristol and Gary Leuenberger, two experts in CS80 sound design, to do the initial 128 factory presets on the DX7, and they had four days to do it, which they did. Believe it or not, those initial 128 presets on the DX7 were all created by two guys in four days. The DX7 was an unprecedented success. They sold 200,000 DX7s in the first three years. As a comparison, Moog sold 20,000 Mini Moogs over the entire life of the original Mini Moog, and that was at their maximum production capability. So Yamaha really brought mass production uh, to the synthesizer world, and they had to because the DX7 was such an incredible success. However, there was a problem with the DX7, and that is the user interface and programming. The user interface was a completely new paradigm. There was no knobs to twist. You had to access everything with menus and, and parameters, which was bad enough. But then on top of that, everything you knew about analog synthesis is thrown out the window. And we have this new method of generating sound called FM, or frequency modulation, using carriers and operators that nobody understood and nobody had heard of before, which was a second strike. So to bury a completely new and foreign method of synthesis underneath a completely new and foreign way of interacting with a synthesizer meant that nobody could program the things. There were a few musicians like Brian Eno who took the time to learn it and became masters of the DX7 and created amazing sounds and music based on the sounds that they programmed themselves in the DX7s. For the 99.9% .9 of the rest of the DX7 owners, myself included, we just used the presets because we didn't know how to change them. So now we have two things happening. We have a new synthesizer selling hundreds of thousands of units because it creates sounds that nobody has ever heard a synthesizer make before. And two, those sounds are limited to what's in the keyboard because nobody knows how to program it. So because everybody's using them and nobody knows how to change them, those presets got used everywhere. In 1986, 40% of the number one single tracks on the Billboard Hot 100 had 
DX7 presets in them. And on the, the R&B charts, 60% of the number one songs on that chart used DX7 presets in them. You could not hear a song without hearing a DX7 preset in it. The Montage, the Montage M, and the Modi X can all load original DX7 patches into the synthesizer and play them as if it were a DX7. Better than that, we have 16 parts, eight of which are playable from the keybed. Each one of those can hold a DX7 patch. So we could technically have eight DX7s playing at once from a single keyboard. That's pretty incredible. So because of that, I've loaded all the factory original sounds plus another 128 DX7 sounds and plus another 100 sounds that were released publicly by Narf Sounds some time back. And I've loaded those into my montage. So if I go in here and change the bank to DX7 factory and Narf Sounds, which is what I called it on my synth, now we have all these DX7 sounds in here. That's supposed to be an accordion. Doesn't sound much like an accordion. But if you listen to Stevie Wonder in the 80s, you heard that sound. How about this one? I can't even name how many songs from the 80s used that sound, but there was hundreds. Of course, the, uh, the one of the most famous ones was the Electric Piano 1, EP1. Every time I hear that sound, I just think of Doogie Howser. Or how about this one? Toy piano, used in quite a few different songs. Uh, I'm thinking Martika. And then this one was used absolutely everywhere, the tubular bells patch. Taco Bell commercial. Or Sin Orc, used by Queen on Who Wants to Live Forever. There's quite a few strings in here that are passable sounds. But they don't sound as good as strings that we're expecting to hear today. However, because we're working with a modern synthesizer with effects in it, we can go in and add some, uh, let's see, some reverb send. And that's a bit too much reverb, but we can fix that. Let's give that a church, how about that? The, the primary sound that you're hearing is still the same, but giving it some reverb just seems to give it a little bit more depth and organic feel to it. So if you want to play 80s music, I suggest you go to Narf Sounds because they have packs set up where uh, they have set up individual performances for specific songs where they've taken a lot of time to deconstruct individual songs. If there's DX7 sounds in them, they've got the actual DX7 patches in there. Sometimes there's parts of songs that are really complex and they'll just put a sample in there that you can, maybe a loop, you can hold down a key and it'll play a complex loop. Uh, the whole idea is that it's for people who are doing cover songs uh, in bands or what have you. And they've done a lot of the hard work that's required to actually create those songs. Yamaha wrecked my video. So how I originally shot this video 
was I uh, told you about the Yamaha FM converter that lets you convert DX7 patches, the original SysX files that would be loaded into DX7s and convert them into libraries you could load into the montage of Modi X. Uh, my original plan for this video was to demonstrate how you use that tool, they have an online tool, that uh, to do that and show you how you could do it and load your own sounds in there and so on. However, three weeks ago, Yamaha shut down that page and it doesn't exist anymore. Well, it didn't. So my video was going to be that now that Yamaha has shut down the uh, FM converter webpage, uh, I'm going to give you a package of all my DX7 patches here for free. Um, and I had that set up and I had, uh, you know, a 250 patches. A lot of them were the original factory DX7 patches. There were some NARF sound patches that NARF sound uh, released publicly a little while ago. I'm still going to do that. So if you are interested in a pack of sounds that is, uh, I think it was about 256 sounds of uh, original DX7 sounds that were factory and expansion patches and then the NARF sounds, which is I think about another 90 or 95 sounds. I have that library. That's actually what you saw me scrolling through on my, on my montage here. I will put a link to that that you can download in the description of this video. You can download it and load that onto your montage or Modi X. I've done all the work for you. You'll see all the patches in there just like you saw on mine. And those patches are tiny. Uh, FMX does not have any samples in it. All it is is just a configuration file that describes the configuration to build the sound. So they don't take up much room in your synth at all. And in fact, those 250 sounds, the library containing those 250 sounds is only 1.6 megabytes. So it's tiny. FMX sounds take up no space whatsoever. There are so many sounds. I have a collection of close to 13,000 DX7 patches uh, that I've collected over the years. There's no way I'm going to try and sort them and move them into here. But now that the FMX tool conversion tool is back online and working, um, let's do just that. I'm going to take some patches from my collection and we'll convert them, turn into a library, load them onto my montage, and I'll show you how it's done. And in typical Yamaha fashion, they have ruined this tool. They redid it and changed how it worked. It used to be that you could take a hundred, a thousand patches, whatever you wanted, cram as many as you wanted into the tool, hit go, and it would compile them all together, spit them out as a montage library file or a Modix library file that you could load directly in. Yamaha has ruined that tool, and now it only lets you do 10 patches. So the most of the number of patches you can fit into a library is 10. What the hell, Yamaha? Now you have to buy a third-party application like uh, Milas Tools uh, to combine libraries together if you want more than 10 DX7 patches in a single library. What a stupid decision on Yamaha's part. Um, maybe I'll have a look at that page and see if there's a way that it can be um, hacked and get rid of that limitation. So let me show you how you can take 10 patches from a DX7 and make a montage library out of them. All right, this is really quite simple. You go to this URL and you can see it at the top there. I'll put a link to this in my description below. And once you get there, you'll see this screen. It's very simplified compared to the uh, old version of the, of the page. The old tool let you connect directly to your synthesizer and transfer the files without having to use a USB key. This one sucks. So, like I said, Yamaha made things worse. So I'm going to take some of my files here. You can see I've got a list of these files here. What are these? I don't know. We'll, we'll pick 10 of these. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So there's 10 item, 10 files selected. I'm going to drag those into here. So here's my 10 files, it uploads them. And once it's finished uploading those 10 files, we convert and download. And there's the downloaded file. So if I open that, you can see I get a zip file with a library in that. So I'm gonna export that into a USB key. Let me do that now. So I'm going to take this library, drag it onto here, 
It'll copy it and now I'll eject that. Okay, so I've got my USB key that I copied the library onto. We'll plug that into my montage. And now we'll go to utility and we are going to contents and there's my montage seven. And what do we call that? Well, there it is, YMC export X7L. So we'll load that. I don't know why that takes so long. I sped that up. So now I'm gonna go into the, our category. We're gonna switch it to YFMC export. And each of those 10 SysX files that we loaded um, have quite a few different uh, patches within them. I think up to 32 per. So as you can see, we now have a huge collection of sounds in here. Um, wow, I mean, there's absolutely tons in here. Synth perk. Sounds like clap. Some of these are really good. No name, no sound. Another tubular bells. Unfortunately, these are not um, categorized at all. So you basically have to go by these tiny little names in here. Pad sweep. Pipe organ. Not bad for electric bass. String ensemble. That's not bad for a DX7. Of course, there's no, uh, like I said, there's there's absolutely no effects back in there. So once again, we could go in here, edit, and we'll just bump up the send there. And if we go to common, we can then go to our effects routing and adjust what we're seeing here. And let's change that to uh, SPX and we'll make it, um, large hall that's not the greatest reverb is it church i like that church one Again, not bad for a DX7 patch. All right, so now you've seen how I actually create those, those patches. If you find a cache of DX7 patches on the web, which is not too hard to do, you can do exactly what I just did. Or if you're lazy, you just wanna download mine and get those DX7 goodies in your synth, Again, link is in the description below, along with a link to Narf Sounds. Please check them out. They've done a lot of the, the hard work for this already, and they, you have ready to go packs to play individual songs from the 80s and 90s. This video is definitely not sponsored by Narf Sounds. I'm just a fan of theirs. I like what they do. And uh, Francis, the guy who runs it, is really a nice guy. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And don't forget to click like and subscribe. It really helps me out when you do that. If you could just take 30 seconds, go and do that right now. I really appreciate it. That's it. Thanks for watching.